is called What Wondrous Love Is This and is perfect for the Lenten season. Greetings. We are so glad that you have joined us for this Lenten service. My name is Reverend Monica Geppet, lead pastor here at Strasburg United Methodist Church. Over these last four weeks, we have been worshiping together online as the Pocono United Methodist Cluster. We have been blessed by music and worship from all of our churches. Thank you to the congregations and the leadership of Wooddale and Anilomic, of Cherry Valley and Poplar, Cherry Lane and East Strasburg, Faith and Reader United Methodist Churches, all who have made our Lenten worship more meaningful. May we walk with Jesus towards the cross, Jesus who walks with us daily. Good evening and welcome. I'm Pastor Margie Good. I'm pastor of visitation here at the Strasbourg United Methodist Church. Please join me in the call to worship as found on your screen. God's love is simple and divine. The love of God encompasses all. Let us take God's word with sincerity and intention. God loves you and me and shines through each of us. Show the glory of God. Please join me in the unison prayer. The words will be shown on the screen. Holy God, in this Lenten journey, we find ourselves drawing near to the pathway of Jesus. With gratitude and grace, our hearts fill for the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. With our biblical ancestors before us, we commit to hope and cling to grace. We resist evil 
justice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Let us mirror the love and life of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
This is the season of Lent. The church is dressed in purple. You might have seen there's purple all around. The outside world has its own seasons and colors. The days we're in are sometimes gray between winter and spring. Sometimes the puddles are frozen hard and bare branches of trees scrape by the snow. Other days the air is warmer and the ice is melting and under the ground bulbs are yet sleeping. We wait for them to show. In the church we're waiting too. We're waiting for Easter. And while we wait, we get ready. Long ago, Jesus went out alone by himself to get ready. Deep inside, he thought he felt Jesus had been called to do important work. But he needed to know the way ahead. So for 40 days and 40 nights, he went and talked to God. I wonder what he talked about. During Lent, we too make time to be with God. We too talk to God. Sometimes we talk to God with words and sometimes with music. Sometimes we paint and sometimes we use crayons. God understands all of those ways. Other times we make silence and we practice listening. That one sounds hard to me. Lent lasts for 40 days and 40 nights. That's a long time, but it takes a long time to get ready. When Jesus came back from the desert, he left everything behind, trusting God would give him what he needed, traveling from place to place, telling everyone about God. We do the same thing. If we've done something wrong, we tell God we're sorry. We Seek to be kind to everyone, not just the ones like us. And when someone hurts us, we ask God to help us to forgive. During Lent, we think about the kingdom of God, too. We plant seeds and wait patiently for them to grow. And during Lent, we sometimes make our lives more simple. When we have more than we need, we often share it with others. We make space. We make time. We make room. Then we're ready for everything to be different and new. I can't wait for Easter. Does it feel to anyone else like we've already done Lent this year? Does it feel like we've been in Lent for the last 52 weeks? They've already been giving up and suffering for what we know, and you're just waiting for Easter to come. For many of us, this last week has marked a year since our lives changed significantly with the declaration of the COVID-19 pandemic, restrictions and the stay-at-home orders. And in the subsequent months, we have all known something about giving up. We may all have known something about suffering as well, but we've not all suffered 
in the same way. We may have all been in the same storm, but we're not all in the same vessels. Some of us are riding out to this storm in kayaks. Some of us are getting by on fishing boats. Others on cruise boats. Some of us are watching from the shore. And others are just hanging on to driftwood in the water itself, tossed and turned with every wave. Some of us have been working remotely, while others have lost their jobs. Some have had COVID, while others have lost loved ones to COVID. Many of us have lost our routines and a sense of invincibility, as well as have had to push back and reschedule vital life events. To say nothing of our teachers and children who have experienced multiple different iterations of schooling, remote, cyber, hybrid, in-person, remote while in the building. Our churches have followed similar paths and patterns. Throw in parking lot model and you've got the whole bunch covered. Even as you participate in worship now, we remember a time when our congregations enjoyed fellowship together and we yearn for its return. After a year of sacrifices, I feel ready to say, I'm giving up. Let me be clear. I'm not giving up wearing my mask. I'm not giving up listening to the Center for Disease Control. I'm not giving up listening to the Pennsylvania Department of Health, our bishop, or our cabinet. Now, I'm fully vaccinated, but I care deeply about the health and welfare of others. I'm not giving up on praying for others and caring well for their benefit. Here's what I am giving up. I'm giving up suffering for Lent. Maybe you want to consider it, too. We heard two scriptures earlier as Pastor Margie read them for us. One continued in the Lenten service of our Pocono cluster is Isaiah 53, and it's often called the suffering servant. The other was the words of Jesus to the disciples willingly taking up their cross. The prophet Isaiah Deeply in the second Isaiah tradition, seeking hope in the midst of the Babylonian exile, needed to know that God had not left them. After a year of knowing our homes better than we ever had, maybe we too need a reminder that God has not left us. God didn't slip out the back door while we were on the couch watching yet another episode on Netflix, true confession. God did not forget about us while we were worshiping at home or attending to the urgent concerns of how to pay our bills. The Israelites needed to be reminded that there already was one slated to bring about the healing and salvation of the world. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed to the exiles who couldn't wait for the return of everything to the way they'd known before. Even though it didn't really work that way. Even though you feel misplaced and weary, bedraggled and uncertain, you're not sure how you're going to make it to the next Zoom call, there's one who already gave life for you. And by a perversion of justice, who could have imagined this future? You don't need to reinvent or do it step by step like you did, struggle by struggle, sacrifice by sacrifice, just to check off the boxes 
and say, I feel pain and suffering. The anointed one, the Messiah, already did. Give up. Willingly hold the cross. Wow. Now, if you're worshiping on March 17th, you might know that this is St. Patrick's Day. Many of us will know Patrick of Ireland for teaching people about the Trinity with a shamrock or driving the snakes out of Ireland with a drum. But I wanted to share a different story. Patrick lived in Britain as a boy and actually came to Ireland as a slave through the raids on the farmlands where he grew up. In his years under slavery, he cared for the sheep of his masters and spent hours praying. After about six years, his prayer to return home was actually answered in a dream. He was advised to walk along the shore where he found a ship to his homeland. In the years after he arrived home, his family was overjoyed, can you imagine, to have him home and begged that he never leave again. But it wasn't long before the insistence of the Holy Spirit showed up to Patrick in yet another dream in the form of a person with letters asking Patrick to come back to Ireland. After some prayerful discernment, he began to imagine a future with hope for the people of Ireland. This time, he traveled with a full entourage of priests and bakers, chariot drivers, and folks to keep him safe in order to share God's love. After Patrick became a bishop, he met a local leader by the name of Dichu. He was a good and kind man, deeply interested in Patrick's talk of this loving God. He asked Patrick to baptize him, and Dichu gave the first barn for the Church of Ireland. Dichu tells us a little something about taking up your cross. For Dichu, it was listening to the insistence and urging of the Holy Spirit to share what he had so that others would come to know the love of God. Knowing that Jesus already offered healing and wholeness, restoration and salvation, his cross was joy. So I'm giving up. I'm giving up on the checklist of suffering with Lent sad faces and emulating the pain of Jesus like the suffering servant. I hear a call to a future with hope. To walk this Lent. Taking a cross of joy, an empty and resurrected cross that brings mercy and hope, salvation and restoration to a hurting world. A world that already had enough blend. We are just waiting for Easter. Spoiler alert. Jesus Christ is risen. This is the gospel, the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
as we part from one another. Give up your suffering and your pain. Let go of your malaise and your discontent. God has already promised you a future with hope. Let the love of Jesus surround you, the mercy of the Creator and the insistence of the Holy Spirit be your companion on this Lenten journey. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 